Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome to the Gaming 4. Today in this Unturned Map Review, I'm going to be covering a map called Alps, and this map was created by a guy named T-Way. To start us off, up on the screen you'll see the score that the map got and some of the more detailed reasons why it got what it got. As always, we try to stay consistent with these, and overall this map did a pretty good job, ending up with an 88%. So let's start talking about some of the strengths of the map and why it scored so high. So there's a few reasons why this map stands out from all the others really, and the first one of those reasons is that this map included NPCs and notes. Now, none of the other maps have done this, not really sure why, because the NPCs themselves are not that hard to make, and uh, the fact that he created a bunch of notes himself really adds to the plot of the map and some of the storyline that you can sort of pick up on. Another one of the very interesting things and unique things that T-Way included in his map is the fact that uh, his detailing was probably the most consistent we've ever seen. So even though his detailing was not the best, like obviously there's some more that you can improve on, uh, he detailed pretty much every part of the map. Now in most maps you see that maybe the first two floors of an apartment building are done and then the rest are blank. Well, T-Way actually filled up all the floors of the apartment building, like, completely. So it, it's very good in that sense, and you can tell there was a lot of work put into the detailing in this map. Another somewhat unique thing that was included in this map was the presence of wolves, bears, and metal nodes throughout the natural part of the map. Now, of course, you know, these are nothing too special, they're built into the game, but a lot of the maps don't usually take advantage of having these. And so, including these in your map really makes the natural side of it a little more dynamic, definitely more challenging as well. Another thing that was very good about the map is that Tiwe included uh, all the bases in terms of item spawns in this map. Now, of course, this is something that is pretty well done in most maps but it's definitely in a very important thing because as a survivor if you're missing out on a certain resource or material you really can't move on in terms of crafting higher level gear so he did a good job of including chainsaws car battery heat stim and many other useful items one of the last things that I should mention uh, is that he did include a lot of good car spawns it's definitely a very important thing because traveling throughout the map is very good in terms of rating and the last thing that I want to mention is that he didn't include the freezing effect throughout the entire map now of course his map is set in a snowy area and I, I don't know if all of you guys have played Yukon but because of the freezing effect throughout the entire map of Yukon it makes it very very difficult and actually not as fun to play because right up off the bat you're immediately dying of cold. What T-Way did in his map is that he only included on the higher areas but he did include the snowy effect throughout the entire thing so it still gives you the good feel of you know the snowy wasteland but at the same time you don't have to be freezing everywhere. Alright that's pretty much it for the positive things in the map that I want to mention of course it's a good map and it received a good rating so if you want to experience maybe some of the other good things about the map please go check it out there's a link below in the description and of course you can just search it up in the steam workshop so now let's move on to some of the weaknesses of the map so one of the smaller things that I uh, found some issues with is that it's really hard to navigate in this map. Now I think part of this was by design. First of all, it's hard to see far distances because of the snow. That of course is unavoidable. What makes this worse is that he purposely made the GPS's not work. So pretty much if you have a GPS you can check your map, but it's pretty much just going to be static. And the really issue with that is because if you die or if you're not familiar with the landscape, it's going to be pretty much impossible to start living and be able to set up a consistent base if you don't know where to go. Now of course this could be fixed if there were charts included in the map and after a while we did spawn some in just to test it out and the charts did work so if he included some chart spawns which I don't think he did it would really fix this issue. Another issue with the map or something that could at least be improved on is that his detailing quality wasn't the best. Now of course I mentioned before that his detailing consistency was fantastic in fact almost perfect well the quality of his detailing maybe the originality of it could have really had some improvement to it. Uh, one thing that really could help is that uh, he would copy paste less for the floors. Now of course that's probably all that got him through uh, detailing all the floors of the office and whatnot, but really adding some more unique features to each of the rooms really would have increased the quality of the map. Another smaller thing that he could have added also to his map is that there was a lack of air vehicles. Now of course he added plenty of cars and those were very good around the map, but uh, if he included maybe a helicopter or a plane it really would have helped as well with the transport of items and people across the map. One of the last smaller things that uh, was probably an issue with the map is that there was a lack of ammo and weapons so that the players that played the map could actually raid the higher tier areas properly. Now the higher tier areas that were included in the map were very good, very challenging, and very action-packed. But the only issue with this is that in order to have those higher action areas 
properly, you have to provide the survivors with proper weapons to actually take those areas on. So an easy way to fix that would just be to add some more ammo drops throughout the map, or maybe a few other or more diverse weapons throughout the map as well. And the last main issue of the map, and one of the main issues we've seen in pretty much all the maps we've reviewed so far, is that there was a big lack of food. Now, I really want to stress this right now to you guys, for all the map makers listening to this, make sure you put enough food spawns in and test your maps on normal difficulty because when you play it in normal difficulty and you normally have like three or four food spawns that doesn't really carry over because most of the time those food spawns are bad quality and eating them will actually kill you in the long run as a survivor so just make sure that you add enough food spawns even go over the top with the food spawns maybe add a few more than you think is necessary because that'll really help the survivors focus more on getting higher level gear and instead of focusing on starving all the time so besides that main issue and some of the smaller ones this map probably would have gotten into the 90s so uh, just you guys keep an eye out for this uh, it's gonna be a main problem in probably a lot of the maps you make just make sure that there are no food issues whenever you play it in survival overall this map was very enjoyable uh, it was very challenging there were some really nice areas to the map and there's a lot to work towards so anyway guys if you want to check out the map remember there is a link in the description below or you can search it up by its name anyway thank you guys for watching please like the video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe if you want to see some more i will see you all soon.